there is a video by Sunny V2 made about the dark side of Ryan's World TV. This is gonna probably ruin a bunch of kids' childhoods. But, uh, you, you, it turns out that the people who have, we've been watching for years, well, I haven't watched this kid in, like, years, but this has been crazy. Throughout 2020, Ryan's World took home an approximate income of 29.5. That's impressive for a, li for a little kid. That kid is was like born in 2011. Million dollars, making him the highest paid YouTuber for the year above the likes of Mr. Beast and Jeffree Star. The most significant part, which I'm sure many of you are already aware, is that Ryan is only nine years old, making him younger than the and uh, he has the same birthday as my dad and uh, this video was from 2021 and uh, now Ryan's like 12 and 13 if you've seen like his newer videos he doesn't seem like he enjoys it anymore Birds mobile game, the film Avatar, as well as the legal working age for a McDonald's employee. 29.5 million isn't exactly a bad wicket for anyone who's yet to go through puberty. And considering in every episode it looks like Ryan is having the time of his life, on the surface it seems as though the Ryan's World channel is the spitting image of perfection itself. However, yeah, like back then Ryan actually felt like he wanted to be in the videos because. Back then, when you're a kid, other kids think you're cool when you have all these toys. But now, when you're a teenager, a bunch of kids are just not, or just, they're not good anymore. But like all things in life, the Ryan's World channel has a dark side that's rarely talked about in the media. We try not to capture any moment that Ryan's in distress. Legal battles to do with not fully disclosing paid sponsorships. Oh, no. This is actually bad. Popular YouTube toy review channel accused of blurring lines for ads. In videos, the exploitation of Ryan for the financial gain of. Yeah, his parents basically forced him to be like this for years. His parents, and most surprisingly, the criminal history associated with Ryan's mother, Loanne Kaji, who in her younger years actually went to prison. Oh, no. Seven year multi million dollar YouTube star Ryan Kagi's mother has a criminal past. In June 2002, when Ryan's mum was 18 years old, 18 years old this w this woman was, was. shoplifting at a JC Penny located in her hometown of Houston, Texas. The security of the store discovered that she'd been trying to steal six items of clothing totaling $93, which is equivalent to around 135. Oh, that's crazy. Inflation is absolutely destroying everything here. Five dollars today. After being taken back to the police station, she will be fined $150 for the theft, given 40 hours of community service, as well as being put on a six-month probation. Honestly, like if she stole, like, more expensive things, then it would have, like, definitely impacted her, like, criminal record a lot worse than it already is. To be honest, like, what was she even thinking back then? Period. On top of this, she had to carry an offender identification card while also attending an anti-shoplifting program. However, here's where it gets interesting. Rather than simply showing up and doing her 40 hours of community service, she sat around and did nothing. Luann didn't report to her community supervisor, didn't- That is the worst thing you could ever do. Not even a, an 18 year old would make that mistake. Like, you would have to show up to the community service. You didn't even show up at all. What despicable activities were you doing? Pay the fee she was supposed to pay, and didn't even show up to any of the community service when scheduled. For this reason, she would be arrested again, and instead of a $150 fine and a slap on the wrist, she would be sentenced to two months in the Houston Harris County Jail. She will remain in jail for 30 days, after which she will be released, and from the information available, managed to stay out of jail from that point onwards. Now, making a judgement about an individual's character based on what they did at the age of 18 is perhaps a little unfair. People change a lot in 18 years, so Um, honestly, that's a good point right there. You don't really know better when you're 18. Because your brain isn't fully developed yet. 
It doesn't fully develop until you're 25. So... That's like the only point uh, I will give Ryan's mom for. Her going to jail could be totally discountable, but at the same time, I think it'd be unwise to pass it off altogether as, oh, she was just young and dumb. It's not exactly like she was 13 years old stealing some food because she needed to eat and didn't have any money. She was 18 years old and going out of her way to steal expensive clothing, something that's more of a luxury than a necessity. Then, as mentioned, she would go on to double down on her mistake by failing to comply with the consequences. She just ignored them, giving us an insight into her character at a younger age. Perhaps this is a far-fetched assumption, but maybe we could also say that it showed us she had an innate willingness to cut corners in order to get what she wants, which will be an important factor for later parts in the video. After this whole prison saga was over and done with, Loanne would meet her future husband, Cheyenne. Oh, yeah. This guy was... Yeah, I remember the dad. He was actually pretty interesting. With whom she would later have her first son, Ryan, in October 2011. In March 2015, oh, yeah. at the age of only three and a half, Ryan asked his mum, how come I'm not on YouTube when all the other kids are? This was groundbreaking at the time. When Ryan was only, a, like, three years old, he'd make a... a YouTube channel. And, uh, unfortunately for Ryan, his generation's absolutely fried. Because if you're born, like, after 2010, you're considered Gen Alpha, and that whole generation's cooked. I was watching other people, and I was like, why am I not on their app? Following this statement, Ryan's parents would create the Ryan Toys Review channel and begin making the videos with him shortly thereafter. Let's go get it then, you want it? Uh-huh. Okay, put it in the cart. In July 2015, only four months after creating the- The mom actually seemed like she was a nice person channel, they would see their first piece of viral success with their video, Giant Lightning McQueen Egg Surprise, I'm filling up gas. which gained 20 million views after only one month. You're watching these videos now? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Following this success, the channel began posting new videos daily. And while this was great for the growth of the channel, it began the discussion about whether the channel was really in the best interest of Ryan, or was a borderline abuse to have the child doing so much work with the money ultimately going to the parents. There's always been a question of ethics in any discussion relating to kids' channels on YouTube. What are the labor laws about putting your kids in videos? Like, If a kid likes it and is pretty, like annoyed that they keep doing it and they're tired of it yeah just honestly like if your parents are forcing you just tell them uh, delete the uh, like just uh, don't upload anymore my mental health is all messed up uh you're just gonna make problems worse and if they don't listen get a restraining order on them i don't know what how do you quantify the value that they're bringing to the content? Are there? Is that value no, going back to them? Point. But is the criticism towards preteens making more than a million dollars a year on the YouTube platform just pure jealousy from other people who might be in their 40s making 60 grand a year? Or is there a legitimate case for concern? It's an extremely difficult topic to determine for a few main reasons. Firstly, there'd be channels where the child being the main star legitimately wants to be a part of the show, which is apparently the case with Ryan. What was special is that he wanted his own YouTube channel. Channel. That's actually crazy. Yeah. And you have a lot of parents who yeah. like, come on, push pushing their that. kids out there. However, there are other channels on which. Yeah, I hate it when parents do that. They basically just go ahead and. It's like those family channels, like the royalty family and the. The Ace family. They just shove their kids in the. The, the camera, like. They shove their kids in, like, face into the camera. Like, what is the point? You're just not making them happy at all. They're gonna get bullied when they're in middle school and high school. Because that's actually one of the dumbest things to ever do. Those parents are like 30 or 40. Bro, you know better. Why do you keep doing this? 
How would you like it if your kids started forcing your face into that? You can tell the kids clearly don't want to be involved in the videos, and the parents are forcing them to appear in order to gain ad revenue. What is this? Cody! So in order to determine- I absolutely hated the Daddy05 channel. Thank God they were terminated. Because they started abusing two of their kids. Yeah, you know the history of these two. And whether Ryan being involved in the videos is a part of the channel's dark side, we have to first determine a few different things. Is it voluntary involvement? Is he being held at gunpoint to perform? Does he have to deal with the difficult parts of the channel like editing, criticism, and innovation? How much of the spoils and rewards actually go to Ryan in the present and future? We see comment after comment talking about how they are exploiting him, which would be awful if true. But simply having him appearing in the videos isn't really exploitation. We need to ask more questions. Now, the first thing we have to establish established here in order to determine whether Ryan's appearance is a part of the dark side of the channel is whether or not Ryan is being forced to appear in the videos. Now Ryan stated that the channel was birthed because he personally wanted to be on YouTube and it wasn't because his parents forced him. However, it's also important to question this statement with a healthy level of skepticism. Ryan was only three and a half when he was first put on the platform. It's hard to believe that any kid of that age would already be keen to personally appear. Honestly, that's a pretty decent uh, uh, theory. Like, a kid who was like three and a half years old, there's like no kid that wants to be on YouTube that time. You're on any kind of public platform. But I could be completely wrong with that. As shown in the same video, the number one most desired job for kids aged 8 to 12 is YouTube star, followed by teacher, professional athlete, musician, and astronaut. However, if you did a study on the most desired jobs for kids aged 0 to 4, they probably wouldn't have an understanding about the concept of working a job. For this yes. reason, I'd make the assumption that the idea for the channel was more than likely from Ryan's mom. And the story of Ryan just seeing other kids on YouTube and wanting to be a part of it as well is an over-embellished statement to go along with the channel's light-hearted brain. However, while this somewhat answers whose idea it was for the creation of the channel in the first place, it fails to answer the more important question. Is Ryan being forced to appear in the video? Yeah, that's what a lot of people are asking about. If Ryan is forced to do this, at the time for this video, he was like 10. I mean, his birthday is in October of 2011. That was when he was born. And, uh, he basically, uh, was, uh, literally wanting to go onto YouTube, but then his parents started forcing him, and then he just didn't really want In the beginning, to. perhaps there was a trade-off between Ryan and his mom, where if Ryan's mom got to film Ryan in the videos, Ryan would be able to get as many toys as he wanted. A deal that makes sense for both parties. This one would actually work if the kid was, like, under... To 11 because once you're a teenager and you're filming this kind of content you're gonna get bullied it's as simple oh, as that you can clearly see in the beginning that ryan isn't being forced to appear in the videos kids aren't very good at hiding their emotions especially three-year-olds if yes. they're sad they'll show it if they're happy they'll show it why do you want this because i like it oh does it is it fun does it look fun uh -huh. Ryan is clearly happy to be on camera here, and I don't see anything sinister going on in the beginning, except for the fact that maybe Ryan's mum is using the toys in order to get a nice reaction out of Ryan. But as time has progressed and Ryan now has a lifetime supply of toys, using toys as a reward isn't really going to be all that interesting to him anymore. Especially considering he's getting older, which makes me think that unless there's some kind of other incentive for him, the only other way to get him to constantly appear on camera is with a bit of force. If we combine this with the fact that their channel has somewhat of a schedule and uploads almost daily we can almost be certain that there are days where ryan doesn't feel like making the co i remember gus and combo panda those characters were very interesting gus was literally addicted to gummies that, that was pretty funny and would have to be somewhat forced by his parents in order to appear in the videos which would be an element of the channel's dark side yeah. however i could be wrong with this once again and here's why firstly because as previously mentioned even a nine-year-old isn't very good at hiding their emotions if he wasn't willing to appear in the videos he'd be able to tell straight away secondly ryan doesn't actually have a very big role on the channel in terms of workload he's the host and the face of the channel but compared to the rest of the work required those are probably the easiest jobs a lot yeah. of these comments that state that the parents are exploiting the son for views must think that this kid is working 15 hours every uh, and to be honest at that point where he where Sunny V2 basically says that kids aren't very good at emotion at hiding their emotions 
Well, there can be... That actually is a very good point. Even, like, ten-year-olds aren't very good at hiding their emotions. Ryan's, like, almost thirteen. He's probably still not gonna be able to hide his emotions and stuff. As a kid gets older, they start to be... Uh, they start to, like, get less interested in toys. They basically... Uh, the parents that force Ryan to get him onto these videos are just trying to get it because they want more money. Single day being whipped by the parents in order to get out tomorrow's video. But I would totally disagree with that. He's yeah. not going to be doing any editing. He's not going to have to worry about scripting. He's not going to be dealing with sponsors. He's not going to be constantly innovating with new ideas. He's not going to be dealing with sets. All of the hard work is being done by Ryan's parents and their team. Behind the scene, That's it's a lot more work. Cool then somebody might think it is very time consuming. I would do all the editing after Ryan goes to bed, so I would stay up several hours. Assuming all of the back work is done by the parents, each of these videos could probably be filmed within the space of an hour. On top of this, there are videos where Ryan literally has three lines, with the rest of the video being taken over by an adult talking in a kid's voice. Ryan's total quote-unquote work week is probably like 10 hours max, which isn't exactly yeah. all that bad, especially when considering how much the channel is earning, which brings us to the question of finances. Revenue is being generated because these children are creating content. Where does that money go? See, within this comment is immeasurable. Firstly, because I've had a good look and there's- Bro, what is- what was that comment? ...of the Ryan's World channel is that the parents are pocketing all the money. I hope when Ryan's 20... Oh, no, nah, that's crazy. I hope when Ryan's 21, he gets to sue his parents for not sharing any money with- Are you being serious? he gets to sue his parents for not sharing any money with him. Now the level of idiocracy within this comment is immeasurable. Firstly because I've had a good look and there's absolutely no sources pointing to how much Ryan receives for his contribution. So first things first, we don't even know how much of the revenue Ryan is receiving for his portion of the work. If he's releasing, if he's like receiving at least 60 or 70 percent of the money, then that comment would just be absolute bananas. Uh, however, let's make some assumptions. Let's assume that maybe 5% of all profits go back to Ryan for him to use at an older age, and that's probably an extremely conservative estimate. Oh, Assuming no. the channel made 29 million in 2020, that's still $1.5 million for approximately 10 hours of work per week available for Ryan to use at a later date. And if that's the case, I can't really see how that's such a negative. He'll never have to work a crappy first job that he hates. He'll never have to take out a loan just to go to college. Even if only 1% of the profit goes to Ryan, that's still $300,000 a year in his name. Okay, that's still not that bad for him though. At the age of nine. And while as long as Ryan is being paid enough to set him up for life, it's hard to see any problems there. However, a problem might raise when you examine how the money is being earned, another element that's been associated with dark side of the channel. Oh no, mon money, money laundering? September 2019, a complaint was filed to the Federal Trade Commission claiming that the sponsored videos feel too authentic and cannot be distinguished from unsponsored content. At the time, it was revealed that around Ryan's parents responded by saying that the well-being of our viewers is always a top priority for us. We strictly- Buddy, that's cap right there. You're forcing your kid who doesn't want to be in these videos anymore to work and he doesn't want to be a part of it. Follow all platforms, terms of service, and all this existing kid hit laws puberty. and regulations, including advertising disclosure statements. And I guess this one, Damn. as of the age of eight I or nine, cannot recognize that. advertising within media. Many reviews of the Ryan's World Damn. channel state that the content targets your toddlers like cigarette companies. Should advertising be disallowed within the videos altogether? What incentive would Ryan's World have to continue making content if they completely removed sponsors? A natural element of the channel's dark side is that, in order for the creation of the content to be worth it, they kind of have to advertise to kids. And if parents want to distract their kids with YouTube content, they have to bear the brunt of having their kids advertised to. All in all, oh, I think this might be one where you guys have to draw your own conclusion as to the shade of black that permeates the dark side of the Ryan's World channel. Is Ryan being exploited for the financial gain of his parents? Or Probably. Or is it reasonable as long as he's receiving a cut of the pie? Is it ethical to continue sponsorships to an audience too young to understand that they're being advertised? Alright, basically, this just sums up what is wrong about, uh... Ryan, like... Ryan's... Here is literally an example of one of his most recent videos. Like, there was like a meme where he... Uh, basically... 
is too old. And it looks like they have an Elamon too. Let's see what happens. Look at this kid. The, his voice sounds much different now. Why? Do they need to do that to my boy? <laughs> 